This is the Los Angeles Criminal Courthouse and just another frenzied day for the swarms of journalists feasting on the story of the decade. The trials of O.J. Simpson. There's never been one like this case. This is unprecedented in American life. It is almost as if John F. Kennedy had been accused of murdering Jackie. That's how high profile it is. It's ben Stein is an author, actor and Hollywood lawyer who thought he'd seen it all in this town of celebrity scandal. Imagine, if you will, a member of royalty plus a sports star plus a millionaire plus an actor all rolled into one. That's sort of what O.J. was in American culture. And he is now accused of not only murder, but an incredibly brutal murder. As a kid, I always knew I would be a professional baseball or football player, and it never dawned on me that uh, I would. What is driving O.J. Simpson is that need to be known, that need to be liked, that need to be said, hey, that's O.J. Simpson. When I walk down the street, I want people to know me. O.J. Simpson was the legendary footballer who ran 2,000 yards in a season. The equivalent of, say, scoring 30 rugby tries or kicking 150 AFL goals. He was that rare sporting jock able to translate fame on the field into a career as an actor in movies like Naked Gun. Please, throw down your guns. It's the kind of scene you'd expect at a Hollywood movie premiere. The cameras, satellites, fans on the pavements, the stars arriving in limousines. But they're not stars coming down the stairs. They're lawyers, O.J. Simpson's lawyers. And the occasion, a brief court appearance at which the most famous man ever to be charged with murder in America is expected to utter just two words, not guilty. And are you ready to enter a plea at this time? Yes, Your Honor. How do you plead to counts one and two? Absolutely 100% not guilty. And do you deny... The entire country has been mesmerized by this case. People are riveted on it, on every bit of information and every bit of pseudo-information. Former it's LA District Attorney Ira Reiner has overseen some of this city's most dramatic courtroom tussles, including the Rodney King case, which sparked the LA riots. It seems that people here don't want to believe that O.J. is capable of the crimes he's been charged with. Well, you know, it's sort of like uh, having one of your very close friends charged with a horrible crime. You don't want to believe it. How difficult is it to prosecute someone like that? It is always difficult to prosecute a celebrity because people, jurors, do not want to think the worst of them. But O.J. is more than a celebrity. O.J. is an authentic American hero. And how difficult is it to prosecute a hero? I can't begin to say because we've never tried that before. My wife, Nicole, who came into my life at what is probably the most difficult time for an athlete at the end of my career. And she turned those years into some of the best years I've had in my life, babes. Can you send someone to my house? What's the problem there? The public face of O.J. Simpson as a loving husband was, it seems, a long way from the reality. Okay, what does he look like? He's O.J. Simpson. I think you know his record. Could you just send somebody over here? Okay. Have they been drinking? According to tapes released by the prosecution, he'd been beating his wife for years. He just drove up again. He just drove up. Wait a minute, what kind of car is he in? He's in a white Bronco, but first of all, he broke the back door down to get in. The murder investigation continues, with the police focusing on the blood stains found in... In June, police found Nicole dead. Along with a friend, Ronald Goldman, she'd been brutally murdered. Before police could charge OJ, he was on the run, leaving a friend to read a parting message. I can't go on. No matter what the outcome, people will look and point. I can't take that. I can't subject my children to that. So I looked at my wife and I said, sounds like a suicide note. Let's go find this guy. Out searching for OJ and his big scoop was television reporter and helicopter pilot Bob Turr. We decided the best place to go would be 
just like a Hollywood movie, go to the cemetery where Nicole Simpson was buried. Can you think of a better Hollywood ending? O.J. Simpson going and killing himself at the grave of Nicole Simpson. How melodramatic. So we flew down there, and we were staking out the cemetery. Well, sure enough, just a short time after we get there, there's a police band call where they say O.J. Simpson's been spotted a mile away from the cemetery. Well, we were overhead in minutes, and the rest is history. This is Bob Turr. Uh, we're over the... Uh, Bob's report began the coverage of this now infamous two-hour police chase that was beamed live around the world. In America, 100 million people watched on television as O.J., holding a gun to his own head, was driven slowly along L.A. freeways by fellow footballer A.C. Cowley. At one point during the pursuit, we were about 35, 40 feet away. We wanted to be able to shoot through the window and see if we could see O.J. Simpson holding this blue steel revolver to his head. He is back there with the gun. Didn't think he might point it at you? Hey, I've been shot at a lot. You know, it's a big sky and we're a very little helicopter. I have long ago come to regard the city as the derationalized zone. When I saw the people on the freeway cheering, saying, go, OJ, go, holding up signs saying, go, OJ, go, I thought to myself, these people have lost their minds. They think they're part of a movie or a TV show. They are cheering for a man whom their city government has accused of severing the head of his wife to the spinal column and stabbing a person he didn't even know 30 times. This is real life. This woman really died. Ronald Goldman really died. People don't seem to understand that in this case. America's morbid curiosity with this case is drawing thousands of sightseers here to Brentwood, all hoping for a glimpse of O.J. Simpson's house. Now, this suburb is more exclusive than Beverly Hills. Michelle Pfeiffer has a house here, so does Mel Gibson. The residents of Brentwood are so furious, their neighbourhood has become the hottest new tourist attraction in town. They've even suggested throwing a tent over O.J. Simpson's house to keep the sticky beaks away. As one social commentator put it, it's going to take a major psychological task force to shake Americans out of this one. Does it say no parking? Yeah, down farther in the bar. The gawkers and the hawkers have souvenired anything they can carry from Brentwood. Street signs, bark off trees, even clumps of lawn. And they just keep coming. I've seen that you've been here for a while and you've seen the traffic that's come by. There are several hundreds just in the last 20 minutes that you've been here. So that's quite amazing. What's this? The last two pictures of OJ doing the advertisement for the boots, 1980, October. Why would someone set him up? Because he got money, they want to see him broke. What could I sell? In a day? About a hundred a day. And now O.J. Simpson's trial is a business. It's a business for his lawyers. It's a business for the media. It's a business for the people selling T-shirts. It's a business of selling fame, selling gore, selling attachment to something bigger than yourself. It's a business. Entertainment Tonight now chronicles the downfall of a superhero. The question everyone wanted to know was, would he surrender or kill himself in front of the cameras? Americans can't get enough of this case. Every court appearance is covered live. Every news bulletin carries another episode of America's most compelling soap opera. In the United States, and particularly in California, journalists can cover a court case as freely as they might cover football. There's not a thought here about prejudicing a trial or influencing jurors. The real trial hasn't started. The trial by media is in top gear. It's ridiculous to think that the media has done anything improper or the media is going to affect the way this uh, the way the uh, jury is going to see this case. O.J. Simpson is going to get more than a fair trial. He's going to get off. They're, they're not going to find 12 people to find him guilty. In America, the law is that if you're a black defendant, you have to have some blacks in the jury. Question, has America become so racially angry and polarized that a black juror will no longer vote to convict a black man 
no matter what. It sure looks that way in high profile cases. In this city where the 92 riots are still fresh in memories, that's the other strand in this landmark case. O.J. Simpson is likely to be judged as much on race as on evidence. Both the prosecution and the defense are trying to poison the well from which any potential juror may drink. Are you suggesting that it's nigh on impossible to find an impartial jury? It will be virtually impossible for the prosecution to deal with the problem that about two out of three blacks, generally across the board, are favorable to O.J. Simpson. This case is about the worst nightmare of the white community, namely that even the most socialized, privileged, upscale black would revert to gang behavior. He was the model American. He was the guy who came up from the streets, from the slums, from the gangs, made it through his physical prowess and bravery and smarts, turned himself into a respectable citizen. He was the model for what Americans desperately want their black citizens to become. Los Angeles Police Department is actively searching for Mr. Simpson. Most people who have eyes and ears are thoroughly convinced that he's probably not innocent, but I think we would all be shouting hosannas if he were innocent. Not guilty. Not guilty. Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.